You and everyone else on the planet has seen the uh, headlines lately that intermittent fasting might be very bad for your heart. It might increase your risk of heart attack or even heart death. Virtually every mainstream media outlet in the country has covered this. The New York Times says, is intermittent fasting bad for your heart? Here's what we know. USA Today says, we were surprised intermittent fasting flagged as a serious health risk. And then a Fox News affiliate says, intermittent fasting may actually be dangerous for your heart. New research finds. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician. Let's look into this issue. And I'm going to tell you a really weird finding at the end of this video that most people aren't talking about when they talk about this. And so stay tuned till the end. So the first thing you need to know is this is not actually a study yet. This was a poster presentation at an American Heart Association event. It has not been peer-reviewed. It has not been published anywhere. So to call it a study, first of all, is disingenuous because I think most people would understand that the definition of a study that doctors or dietitians or the American Heart Association is about to talk about. It should be a peer-reviewed and published study. It shouldn't be a preliminary study, a poster presentation that hasn't been in any way looked at or torn apart to see if it's even worthy of discussion. And so my current opinion is, is this is not even worthy of discussion, but unlike me, every mainstream media outlet, every news outlet, every website thought that this was definitely fodder that needed to be talked about in depth and, and used to scare people. And I'll get to why they all believe that. Typically, I yell at mainstream media because they blow things out of proportion to get clicks. But in this case, they did not do that. And I'm going to explain why in just a few minutes. So this study was based on NHANES data, which was collected between 2003 up to 2014, 2018, depending. So right off the bat, if you were alive and, and an adult in 2003, you remember nobody was talking about intermittent fasting then. It was not a thing at all. What they did was they dug back into the NHANES data set, back to a time period where Jason Fung was not a household word. Nobody was talking about doing longer fasts or intermittent fasting. Now, it's absolutely true that humans, as a species, have been practicing fasting, long fasts, for thousands and thousands of years. Every major religion had a long fast that you did. It wasn't considered dangerous. It was considered just something that all adults who weren't pregnant, who weren't breastfeeding, you just did that. Before that, there's anthropological research that humans fasted for days, for many, many, many long periods of time over the course of their life, and not by choice perhaps, but because they didn't make a successful kill. And so there was nothing to eat. So you didn't just lay down and die. You fasted and tried to figure out where your error was so that you could be successful with the next hunt. The way all the data was collected in the NHANES was that they would do food frequency questionnaire tests with the participants. And this is basically a multiple choice guess test. And in the this data set that they're talking about in this unpublished, unpeer-reviewed study was they did two food frequency questionnaires that covered a year. And so they did that twice in the entire NHANES data set. People were asked to recall what they had eaten up to a year before the multiple guest test was administered. And then they used that as meaningful, reliable data to then crunch these numbers and come up with the results of this poster presentation that's unpeer reviewed. So what this poster presentation found was no increase in all-cause mortality whatsoever, uh, regardless of how long people fasted. And keep in mind, people back then weren't doing 16 eights, and they weren't doing 24 and 22-2 and 48-hour fasts and rolling 24s and rolling 48s. Nobody was doing that back in 2003, 4, 5. What they basically collected was people who got up and had a cup of coffee and a cigarette and skipped breakfast. That's the people. Or some somebody who was so poor they couldn't afford breakfast or somebody who was so stressed out because of a recent loss or they were working two or three jobs they didn't have time for breakfast or they were so depressed that they just didn't eat breakfast and so that's where they and so for those people 
And now I'm sure they're going to claim that they adjusted for that. But I have a huge question. How do you adjust for that? How do you tease out all those people versus people who are just doing a 16-8? I don't think you can. But what they found was a hazard ratio of cardiovascular death of 1.91% percent. Relative risk wise, that's a 91 percent increase in cardiovascular death in the people who were fasting for 16 or more hours a day. First of all, if you don't know much about epidemiology or observational research, every other research discipline except for nutrition, human nutrition actually, even in bovine and porcine nutrition, if something comes back with a hazard ratio of one uh, under two, so in this case 1.91 percent, it's considered static. It's considered background noise. It's not considered a, even a finding that you would publish. This goes for all of the hard sciences. And then veterinary nutrition, they could care less about a hazard ratio of 1.91. Only in human nutrition is this considered OMG. We've got to talk about this. Definitely when this is peer reviewed and published, if it ever is, you will see all these flaws in methodology that you see in most other nutrition research. But there's a problem here because where did all the news media, where did they get this story from? This was a poster presentation. Now, don't tell me that Fox News and New York Times and CNN were all at the AHA's conference, diligently taking notes when they, when they presented this poster of unpeer-reviewed, unpublished research. This had to come from somewhere. Where did it come from? Here's where it came from. From a press release from the American Heart Association. Time-restricted eating may raise cardiovascular death risk in the long term. Now, here's my question. Of all the things, you would expect that the American Heart Association would not issue a press release about something that's not peer-reviewed, not published. It's literally a poster presentation. It may never be published. It may go through peer review and be changed significantly. Why did the American Heart Association go to the trouble of putting out this press release? Because, I mean, you can't blame Fox News or New York Times or any of the other outlets for publishing this. It was a press release from the AHA. Now, there are those with a conspiratorial mind who are saying, well... I'll bet you that intermittent fasting is becoming so popular that it's cutting into the profits of big food and big pharma, both of whom give the American Heart Association millions of dollars a year in donations. I bet that's what it is. Now, more nuanced, thoughtful people are saying, I literally have no idea why they thought this was worthy of a press release. The hazard ratio is less than two. This is based on observational data, a very infrequently administered food frequency questionnaire, multiple guest tests, which have been shown time and again to be notoriously unreliable. The data came from a time period in Haynes' research when nobody was talking about doing 16-8 or 22-hour fast or 20 or two-day fast. Nobody was, that was not popular then. Nobody was doing that on purpose back then. Only people who were sick, who had lost their appetite due to stress, due to depression, due to nicotine overdose every morning, due to drug use every morning, that's the only people who would have been fasting for 16 or more hours a day back in 2003, 4, 5, 6, 7. It wasn't a thing. I think the question we should all be asking, and I think the question that we should be asking the American Heart Association on Twitter, X, on their YouTube videos, anywhere you can ask the question is, why, why, of all the things you could have issued a press release about, why this? Why is fasting so high up on the American Heart Association's radar? Did they feel it was worthy to pay somebody to write this press release and then re release it to the mainstream media? In this case, I have no problem with what the mainstream media did. This is not their fault. This came straight from the American Heart Association. You would almost think that, that CNN or Fox News or New York Times, they would be remiss if they didn't publish this because most of them don't have science editors anymore. They, didn't, they don't have the time or the money or the expertise to dig into this. They just blindly trusted the American Heart Association, which is exactly what millions of other people all around the world do. I think this is a wake-up call to you and to mainstream media and everybody else out there all across the world. It's time to stop blindly trusting the American Heart Association if they don't have any better sense 
than to release something like this that has not been vetted, has not been peer-reviewed, hasn't even been published. Who knows? Maybe this will be completely destroyed in the peer review process. It, that literally could happen. It does happen very often to research. Once the reviewers read it, they're like, this, has got, this is riddled with errors. You need to rewrite this whole thing. You need to go back to the drawing board. That happens with non-peer reviewed, non-published research. How does the American Heart Association, how do they know this is even going to pass the peer review process? How do they know it's even going to get published in its present form? Well, they shouldn't, but if they do somehow, then that's weird. But if they don't, this is the truly weird thing that they they effectively put their reputation on the line by issuing this press release for this unpeer-reviewed, unpublished poster presentation. I find that highly worrisome. It needs to be a wake-up call. We all need to go. The next time the American Heart Association issues a press release about something, I think the vast majority of mainstream media, of academic experts, of doctors and health care providers and dietitians are going to go, I'm going to hold off on recommending this. I'm going to hold off on publishing this. Because remember that, that intermittent fasting thing that didn't pan out? Where did that come from? I don't know. So I want you to tell me in the comments, please, what do you make of this? Is it that big food and big pharma's profits are suffering, therefore the American Heart Association is carrying their water? Do you think that's what it is? Or do you think that the American Heart Association is so wedded to highly processed food and to pharmaceutical intervention that they don't want people to take active steps to improve their health? Or do you truly truly think that fasting for more than 16 hours a day, which humans have been doing for millions of years, every major religion advocated some form of longer fast, do you think that it truly is uh, increases your risk of heart death, cardiac events? Even though there was no change in the all-cause mortality in the study, they really wanted to put this fear into people. And this is a global story. The India Times, all of the UK papers, all of the EU papers, everybody covered this because the American Heart Association currently is highly respected. But I think that may change after this. Please tell me why you think that they would issue a press release about something as inconsequential, as unproven, as unpeer reviewed as this. What is their motive? What's their intent? What do you think they want the message to be to the hundreds of millions of people who read the, the news stories about this press release that the American Heart Association put out themselves? And also, I want to let you know that if you are trying to do longer fasts, I don't think that it's dangerous. I think it's actually one of the most healthy things you can do. And if you need support with your fasting, if you need support with a low-carb diet, then please consider joining our private community, phdhealth.community. There's a link down in the show notes. We'd love to see you in there. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.